God of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, and our prayer. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and he wept upon them, and after after that, his brothers talked with him. The 
word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 133, found on page 787 in your service leaflet. And, and in your service leaflet, we will read the psalm in use. Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like sign on the head that one stand upon the beard. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles the person, but it is what comes out of his mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides to the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. 
Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. that Jesus may have 
any blessings of Israel's covenant. But she believes that God has sent Jesus to cross all those barriers, to be a blessing, a blessing to her own kind as well. And she kneels before him, begging for mercy. Epiphanius, another doctor of the church, called her the mother of the Gentiles. That means she's the mother of all of us, unless any of you have been born in Israel, but that's what it means. Notable, it's notable that Jesus does not stop, stop with the healing of this daughter, but he goes on responding to her great faith. He will heal and he will preach and he will even set forth another banquet that we know of as the miracle of the loaves and fishes before the Gentiles. There's another one. There's another feast. But for those that were not Israelites. Is it any wonder then that we borrow this woman's words when we approach the sacred banquet whenever we celebrate right one? Our prayer is we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under thy table but thy property is always to have mercy. I read into that, there's hope for me after all, because if he could reach out and say a member of a, a society that was not accepted, he certainly can save me. Most of us within the church today are like that woman and her child foreigners to the ancient promises of those who have seen God's gracious mercy again and again. To receive his mercy, we need to establish a relationship with him. And very often therein lies the rub. Getting on that deep relationship with him pick up scripture, we'll read it every once in a while. Maybe we only read it when we come to church on Sunday, but that's still a step in the right direction. But in order for us to really understand what the Lord is doing for us and with us and in our lives, we have to establish that deep relationship to really understand His mercy. Our epistle today dates to a time when both the Jews and the Gentiles in the Roman church that Paul is addressing were wrestling over who could fairly claim that covenant's mantle. Paul wrestles with why so many of Jesus' own people have rejected him as well. And he bids us to remember that God will not forsake his promises to Israel, but he still wants to reach out to you and me. This final plan is mercy for all, Jews and Gentiles alike. Dining at the table of grace, sharing in the children's bread together again and again. This vision of the whole human community will still challenge us as the family of God in which there are no strangers. How do we encounter those strangers among us? Those we've never seen before. Those seem, who seem to be always asking for something. We don't know them. We pass them on the road pass them in the stores, but when they seem to need help, we pass them by. How do we hear the Lord's come that we heard his invitation last Sunday in our scriptures? Come and follow me. Come 
and be my presence. How do we respond? I will hold your people in my heart. That was the response, the commitment response last Sunday. I will hold your people. Not, the, not just those I know, not just those I'm safe with. We know therein lies a bit of the rub. We're aware that reaching out may jeopardize our safety. What will they have on them? A gun, a knife, when I try to help them. Will they allow my help? I don't know about you, but I go over that every often, once in a while. The thing that I find helps me the most is that relationship with the Lord through prayer that I keep trying to develop and strengthen. Because it's there, kind of at my gut, when I feel this is an okay person for me to help. I think it comes from the Lord. And I think it comes from the Lord too when I feel I'm not too sure about this situation, about reaching out and helping. The key, I think the key to really feeling and experiencing the Lord's daily contact with us is helping us whenever we need it the most is that relationship. And then he goes and comes with us and is the invitation we're inviting to others. That invitation, I will hold your people in my heart, Lord. Your people. Those we exclude may be the very ones needed for our resurrection from the dead, from the inactivity. God's foundational work is to show mercy to all human beings. Those differences, though they may be, remain those differences ultimately irrelevant to making, to grasping what is important. And that is how our lives, our very lives, deliver the message of God, of God's love to all. How we share I don't know about you, but I, I know that standing on the, on the corner and waving the Bible and talking about the passage, etc., etc., doesn't do any good. I can't even get my, my good friends to hear me when I start that up. up. But the reality is, it's our lives, not our voice, that need to show who God is among us today. How our lives deliver the message of God's love to all. That is our mandate today. Lord, we praise and thank you for allowing us to be here present, for allowing us to have the patience to listen and hear what you want us to hear not what anybody else is saying. Speak to our hearts, Lord God, and go with us where we go. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let us stand now and affirm our faith using the form of the key found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father and the
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the Lord of the Virgin Mary and was made the Lord of the For our sins, he was the God of the Lord of the Lord. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the Lord of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the world to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have heaven.